Hey, what's going on? Uh, I don't know how clear this is. My um, lights are out. Oh, they're not out. I just turned it off. Um, so I was trying to make a video here. Uh, just get that out of the way. I hate those safety razors. Especially right here. I've noticed I, I shave right here sometimes and it's just like, ah. So I got that little blood thing, <laughs> scab embarrassing and then just getting older in general it doesn't help um <coughs> I tried to just make a video I was like gaga um, I was just on the phone with the uh, Medicare people and some other people and everything was fine but sometimes when I drink coffee or definitely when I make videos most of the time I start having the Oh, what the heck did I say? Oh, damn. Blackout. Oh, damn. I can't figure out what I said. And then I'm like, huh? But yeah, it's actually a 7 Eleven coffee. I'm just watching some country here. Some Bratley Gilbert. I mean, I guess he's okay. Um, I mean, I like um, Jason L. Dean and. Um, those other guys you know with that strong southern accent draw so yeah <clears throat> little country rock stars but anyways so what I wanted to talk about um, <clears throat> is um, healthcare in America from my standpoint I don't know a lot about healthcare um, except from a patient's perspective, uh, particularly how I've been treated or how I've seen other people, uh, how they've been treated. I'm not bashing all healthcare professionals. Um, I think there's a lot of healthcare professionals that are freaking awesome, like they're, they're, they're lifesavers. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of healthcare providers in general, doctors or PAs or you know, RNs or whatever, uh, they're, they're just douchebags. They're lackadaisical. They're, they're one-sided and uh, narrow-minded. They don't take, uh, they don't really listen. There was even a statistic. I don't know where it was. I'm sure you can look it up somewhere. Uh, I think it was like 70, 80 something percent of people, they didn't feel satisfied about, um, like their doctors, I don't know how to say it. It's like their doctors, they didn't feel like their doctors were spending enough time with them. Like they didn't, it was almost like, you know, they they make this appointment, whatever, they, they go, they have to wait for the doctor for how long, sometimes an hour. And then the doctor comes in and only sees you for a few minutes and all your stuff is never really addressed. It's like, okay, well, let's focus on one symptom. And that's it. Either they're going to do they're going to do some tests, which is going to cost you a lot of money. Um, they might even give you medication or whatever, which may or may not work. Um, but yeah, uh, in the case of me and a lot of people, it's we have more than one symptom. And unfortunately, if you have more than one symptom, you're a hypochondriac, which is bullshit because we're not hypochondriacs. I mean... Granted, there is hypochondriacs out there. Granted that most people, some of those people really make me wonder. Um, wow, my eyes are like heavy as hell right now. That's weird. Not in a sleepy way either. Um, there is, but, and they, they definitely need help. You know, I, I think of a hypochondria like, I got a, I got a cut on my, on my hand. It's, uh, it's red. Um, the, the, the wound is, uh, yeah, the, the wound is red. It's like, oh my God, it's infected. Are they going to cut it off? Ah, you know, That's, I'm like, dude, if you got a red wound, that doesn't mean they're going to cut it off. Now, if you don't take care of that shit, yeah, that's, that's a possibility. That's, but I mean, it, it's still very limited. Um, but yeah, uh, something that I've noticed is doctors really don't um, take the time 
to talk to their patients. Um, I mean, they may take time in a sense at times, but overall, um, they really don't. Like for me, uh, some of the, the experiences that I've had, and I've had many people, and I just, you know, I, I um, get straight to the point. I'm just like, hey, look, um, now this is exactly what this doctor is doing or saying or whatever. And like, dude, I think you need to see another doctor. I'm like, yeah, I should, but the problem is, is most of them are all the same. They all do the same damn thing. You know, they, they don't understand real health issues, and they just don't seem to care. I mean, they, they kind of remind me of certain political groups that I'm not really going to get into. Uh, but uh, they just, they don't give a shit. They're, they're very one-sided. They're, um, they're into their own thinking. That they're not even trying to be like, okay, you know what? Let's open my mind. You know what? Maybe, you know, I, I think that... You know, they call it patient-doctor relationship for a reason, you know? It's, it's a relationship between two, right? Or family or whatever. But it's a relationship between two, you know? You should be open to what your doctor says. Your doctor is a doctor, you know? But your doctor should also be open to what you're saying, you know, which actually expands the mind. Like, you know what? Hey, I just learned something today. Or, hey, you know what? Let's try this because you know what? Sometimes the patients are right. You know, they are at times. I mean, me, I'm very intuitive. I've been able to figure out so many different things over the years. You know, like, Doc, I have gastritis. I know I do. I'm having all the symptoms. Oh, you're just reading medical uh, WebMD or MedMD, whatever you call it, back in the day. Um, now I guess people, they live by it. I don't know. Um, or, oh, you read books at the library. You're a hoo-hoo. You know, you, you're just uh, looking for things that's not there. But over time and labels of, like, hypochondriasis or somatoform disorder, which is actually called something else now, or whatever, um, I proved not only that I actually had gastritis, uh, they found esophagitis, polyp in the stomach, internal hemorrhoids, um, all kinds of shit. And then, um, then people were trying to say, oh, well, you had a, a polyp in your esophagus and blah, 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 and it was in the esophagus, but I think I had three of them. And, and basically all they said is, um, I was like, you see, you know, like, hey, I was right, you know, like, give me appreciation, like, pat on the back, which, I mean, I don't know, but it was like, okay, and? Like, and? Are you fucking serious? Like, and? Really? And they're just like, here, take some, um, uh, I forgot what it was called, um, which is funny now, because that is actually on that, uh, the TV things, you know, the, the drugs where they, well, this drug's been found to screw you up or kill you. Wow. What is that freaking, uh, it's a pump inhibitor. inhibitor. Uh, it was an OTC, 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 um, uh, it's not an antacid, uh, acid reflux. Um, I forgot what it was called, um, not Prozac, it, it was... Not Pepsi, Nexium. That's what it was. Nexium. That used to be the big thing. And they're like, oh yeah, just take this. And you'll get better. It was saying the reason that I had the, the esophagitis is because I was vomiting. Funny thing is, is, all the years that I was telling them, hey, look, I'm having these issues, they completely ignored the uh, me puking large amounts of bile, like a pint at a time of bile. Um, I'm just like, and they still do today. But, I mean, there's been a lot of things, like, nine years it took before I was diagnosed of, um, um, fructose malabsorption. Nine years. You know, just like I've been diagnosed, well, I haven't technically been diagnosed, but, uh, tolls have said, hey, you have leaky gut syndrome. Um, you have this, you have that, you have dysbiosis. 
but you go to a doctor's office and they're just gonna like, even if they know what it is, they're just like, they're just like your gallbladder. Okay, you know what? Let's actually try to fix this. Let's let's heal your organs. Isn't that what health is all about? Heal the organs. You know, get everything running. You know, I'm not a freaking car, dude. You know? Like, if the alternator goes out and it's shot, go buy another one. If my alternator goes out, I mean, I don't know what the hell the alternator would be on the body, but, I mean, let's just say it's a gallbladder, you know? It's like, my gallbladder, like, I've had tests that shows my gallbladder doesn't really work. And now I just got tests, $1,705, and they still don't know, oh, uh, you have polyps in your gallbladder, or you have cholesterol deposits, but you need to go and see your gastroenterologist. I'm just like, um, yeah. So, and then I talked to somebody, and they're like, yeah, there is there is no cure uh, at this present moment. Just cut it out. And I heard from someone else that it costs fifteen thousand dollars. You know, and I, and I think about. All the pain that I've been having in my upper right quadrant. Um, I, I've, I've been thinking about all the digestive issues or the severe constipation that I've had uh, going on for years. And these doctors, they just, they don't do nothing. They're just like, here, take a pill or whatever. And if nothing's working, they just say it's in your head. It, it's psychological. That's why your, your stuff's not functioning right completely ignoring the whole thing when it comes to um, you know the food environment and the toxins and the stress and everything else I mean it's just like dementia that I have uh, I need to start eating more yogurt I like this um, the dementia the, the cognition issues that I have I could to the point that I can't even remember my days like literally let alone weeks I don't know what the hell I did last week I'm thinking about it and I literally I could not tell you I'm only 34, and this has been going on for a while. Um, nobody even does nothing. I remember seeing this uh, one neurologist. He was like, you know, even if you did have dementia, there's nothing we can do about it because the drugs aren't even that effective. You know, but you go and talk to the, uh, the director or whatever, and like, well, I wasn't there. I, I can't comment. It's almost like, what the fuck does that mean? You wasn't there. You can't comment. Like, I understand you were there, but... Is it like you don't believe me? You know, that's that's something else that I've noticed. A lot of doctors are very, um, they're very one-sided when it comes to um, the practice. It's um, they always side regardless with their staff, with their colleagues. You know, they don't need you. They got a they got a business where. People are just going to come there on their own. It's just like, hey, look, I'm seeking help. I've had mofos where I literally go into a doctor's office, like, say, gastroenterology, and right off the bat, they're like, well, I think you have psychological problems. You're crazy. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just talking like normal. I'm like, hey, look, you know, I've had all these these health issues and whatever. And it's like, well, they've done all these tests and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's another thing that I hate. You know, it kind of reminds me of political groups once again. Uh, it's like no, like regardless if they've done a thousand or a hundred thousand tests, it doesn't matter if the doctor isn't trying to actually figure out what you know, piecing together what's actually going on. Their thing is, oh well, here, take this pill. Here, take this pill. Hey, take this, take that. Oh, hey, you know what? Maybe we need to do some surgery. Hey, you know what? Maybe we should do some chemo. Which, by the way, 75% of doctors won't even take chemo because it doesn't work. You know? And the, the chances of survival isn't that high, to be honest. Especially with chemo. And in fact, chemo doesn't even heal you. Chemo is basically... It attacks your immune system. It doesn't make it stronger. It's fucking radiation. It kills so either your immune system is going to run like a bitch and die, therefore the body dies, or it's going to fight like a motherfucker and hopefully survive. 
But even then, you can still have remission. Because first of all, you just killed off a lot of those good guys, you know, your immune system in general. You know, these other guys, like the, the 300 or, you know, like the 3 percenters or whatever. It's like, the good guys, yeah, they fought, but at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're, um, the forces aren't strong as like it used to be. You know, I'm not saying that people that go for another round of chemo cancer die, but I mean, <clears throat> genetics and all kinds of things play a big part. Um, but I know America's getting sick. Doctors really aren't paying attention. They, they don't care. Um, customer service sucks. Um, I remember, and I was talking about this yesterday, thinking out loud and stuff. Um, uh, what do you call that, uh, Janet? Um, when you like, nee, 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 nee. but it's not. Nee, 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 nee. It's. Um, I was looking it up yesterday. <laughs> I'm on my phone. Damn it! I was gonna look it up on my phone. Um, maybe I can look it. Oh, I, I mean, I gotta sign in. Uh, it's, it's like when you talk to, um, damn it, I hate that, when people are talking loud on the, um, my brain is thinking too, um, I really wanted to get that out before I ended the, uh, the, the stream, I don't know if you can hear, but these people are loud as hell. They don't care. That, that really ticks me off. Especially when I'm really trying to, like, think about um, this thing that I'm trying to say. Because I really wanted to uh, get it out there. Um, I gotta put in my info. Because I, I was looking it up on YouTube. Replimanding. Huh. <laughs> wow, I haven't even got to it yet. Oh, that's weird. Some chick is like all up on the camera right now. Oh, these people piss me off. I, I like quiet. You know, when, I, when there's people outside just making all kinds of noise. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. I know you heard that. Probably. Person's like, hey, hey, hey. but um, reprimanding. You know, everybody reprimands. You know, it's just how you want to do it. I think that reprimanding has a bad um, stigma because everybody thinks reprimanding is, you know, you want to be, hey, look. I mean, if you're not, you know, taking charge, like, hey, look, if you, if your employees or whomever isn't doing their job, you know, if things are happening, you know, you're an idiot. Your, your entire structure is going to fall. You have to stay firm about, hey, you know, this is how it should be. And if you can't follow these rules, you know, you're going to, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go find another job or whatever you want to do, you know, sit on the, ooh, I don't, what's those Mexican things? I, I bought some, um, they're like donuts, sort of, but they have like, um, colors and stuff on them. It's what the Mexicans eat. I don't know, I bought some last night, I was just I was thinking about that. You know, I sat on the couch and eat pom-poms, which actually, those are pretty good. I haven't had them in a long time. Uh, my ex used to eat them. Not a lot, but, yeah. <clears throat> but, I mean... Yeah, and I remember um, I was somewhere, and these doctors were acting like idiots, just like treating treating me like crap and whatever. And I went and said something. You know, that's something you do. Like you're taught as a a youngster, like, hey, look, if somebody's doing something bad to you, you go and you talk to someone higher up. You know, just like school. If 
you know, someone's picking on you or whatever the case is, you know, I mean, in some cases, you got to whoop ass or take a whoop ass, uh, ass whooping, whatever, but you go and tell your teacher, you know, or talk to a, a higher figure or somebody. But like I said earlier, uh, the doctors and uh, the medical staff, uh, profession, professionals, professionals, I'm just saying professionals because they get paid. And I'm not saying they're professionals because they're good at what they do. They're just getting paid. Um, I just completely blacked out. Hey, my first blackout 20 minutes later. Um, but uh, I don't know what I was saying about that. But doctors, oh, yeah, it was something. I, I talked to some lady. I, I guess it was like some office manager. And most people are freaking quacks when it comes to stuff like this. They'll, they'll fire you. Um, let you go from the practice um, is you know you know can't you rep the man man the person rep we don't do that like what the maybe she had that thought of like the stigma of D -d -d -d, you keep me I mean if you're not taking responsibility you know, if you're an office manager and you're not taking responsibility, if you're not um, implementing rules that should be set in general, if you're letting your doctors act like ass bags and do whatever they want with patients um, in the sense of not good, and you're just like, eh, and then you're siding with your colleagues over your own patients, you're a douchebag and you should be sued. And I think that a lot of organizations, a lot of uh, business companies, uh, medical practices, they do this. You know, that's one of the reasons that people, these doctors or whomever providers are able to, uh, you know, act like the way they act. You know, so you have the, the act of they're not taking your health seriously in general. And then you have the act of um, not only are they not taking your health seriously, but they're usually, you know, trying to label you as a hypochondriac and whatever when they're not even taking it seriously in general. Not to mention in Western medicine, it's completely different. In Western medicine is not even about healing getting to the root of causes it's about suppressing the symptoms so you don't have to think about it so it's not uh stressing you know yes yeah, so you can do whatever you, you want to do but you're still sick it doesn't do anything it's like a band-aid it's like oh shit i'm bleeding like i'm gushing blood almost okay well let's put on some thick ass galls and yeah you'll be bloody but you're not gonna be you know, what you need to do is you need to go to the hospital, take that crap off, clean it up, whatever, and start doing um, sewing, like sew that, you know, stitches, whatever, like bang, 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 which I never really thought about it because I know some they stitch. Um, I guess, like, that's the old technique. I don't know. But, like, uh, sewing um, but yeah like I got a cut I, I've got a few cuts but they, they put like little staples or something and eventually I took them out I don't know I just I never thought about that until now <clears throat> but I mean you, you have that whatever I was saying and then you have the uh, they're just they do whatever and doc, these medical people or whatever they don't take accountability they just let their colleagues run around. Um, but I think what I was trying to say earlier about like the gastroenterology, like I went to one place saying I was crazy and all this other stuff and, you know, and I, I mentioned this to the higher ups, but because I mentioned it, I was being combative somehow. I was being argumentative. I was being inflammatory. Um, and essentially they're like, hey, look, you know, because I wanted to go and see I think that's what it was. I was like, hey, look, I want to go and I want to see another th 
That's exactly what it was. I wanted to see another gastroenterologist. And they all looked at me. My father, apparently. But nobody wanted to take me. See, that's another thing that every one of them, they do. You know, when you see one person, that's it. You cannot see any other person. Because somehow they think that's somehow a conflict of interest. Um, and they don't want to do that. You know, just like when I went to the dentist and he was acting like an idiot, uh, wanted me to take, um, well, I asked him and he approved it, a Rostasis, which, by the way, cost $1,300. Um, but after doing research, I was like, hey, look, you know, would this even be appropriate? Because what I was learning, it, was, it wasn't just for red eyes. Not to mention it can affect your immune system and everything else. Um, and I didn't have any inflammation in the eyes. And I kept asking, like, hey, look, you know, it's like, do whatever you want. And even somebody else was like, hey, look, do you want a second opinion here? It's like, yeah. And I, I went and saw somebody. And eventually, I guess, it was almost, maybe it was, like, insulting. And next thing I know, I get a, a letter, you've been fired. Uh, you've got 30 days to find somebody else. And then they lied and said that when I saw him, which is funny because my last visit wasn't him, but apparently somehow I was uh, combative or, I don't know, I, I was doing something. I, I wasn't. I was very casual. But, yeah, like I was saying, I've noticed that. I kind of wonder if it just stops in the video, the, the fan, uh, when it glitches. So, uh, back to the gastroenterologist, the guy was like, oh, you're crazy, and nobody would see me, and they, they pretty much fired me. And the thing is, is, like, years later, you look at all the, um, um, <clears throat> the reviews on that, uh, that doctor's office on Google or whatever, and there's a freaking ton. I mean, it's not just him. It, it's a group of... I don't know how many people, maybe like 30, 40 doctors. I don't know. It's a, it's a big group in Austin, Texas. And um, they have horrible reviews, like freaking like this. And then you have some skank person um, that always all like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Like every freaking comment, bro. Every comment. I'm just like, wow, if you got like 60, 70 plus negative comments and all you can say is well I'm sorry to you know hear uh, that happened on your visit blah 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 you know if you call us maybe we can you know set something up or I'm just like and and it's, it's always the same thing and I'm just like wow these people are douchebags but this guy labeled me as crazy and said that I was making shit up and whatever which is funny because I had to come back to San Antonio to find a gastroenterologist because everybody was being douches. Uh, there was one guy that was gonna, you know, but, um, you know, some family stuff happened, people died, and I don't know. But uh, I came to San Antonio and saw this one idiot doc. I mean, she's cool to a point. Um, I guess, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't kill her. <laughs> I was under the, uh, they were doing an upper lower GI, apparently I was awake. Um, being very combative and I don't remember what I said which kind of gives me PTSD because it's like what the hell did I say but apparently I was very combative um, god I don't know what I said and they actually found uh, a tubular albuminoma thing uh, I guess it's pronounced like that I don't know but basically those are tumors that uh, eventually turn into cancer um, but mine was a uh, benign so it wasn't cancer so whew. but those people are just like oh you're fine just like all the other issues that I had oh you're fine so you know what if I'm so freaking fine why is it that I have all these things popping up and they can't answer it? or their thing is well if you see enough doctors you're gonna get the, the, the results that you want I'm having these blood tests that shows, I'm having these psychological tests that shows, I'm having these diagnostic tests that show, and they all seem to want to just kind of like, 
Eh, not specific. It's, it's that bad. Your liver enzymes are three times the max. The gallbladder doesn't even work. Um, your, uh, some of your chemistry tests or whatever is like, you know, it's crazy. It's like my uh, thyroid problems, uh, my antibody t uh, TPOs, three times the max. I gained 74 pounds in two and a half years. You know, said it was probably my thyroid. They even said possibly. And they they turned around and said, "Oh, it's not your thyroids." Um, I gained so much weight. I gained four pat sizes within that quick. Um, I wouldn't even say that quick. Like I gained it within you know six months or less. Um, <clears throat> I got stretch marks for the rest of my fucking life, and the only thing my doctor could say is. Do you bruise easily? Do I bruise easily? You know, I, I take that as a... Uh, there's a lot of doctors, if I can catch out on the street. How about that? I mean, I may not be a military serviceman or a veteran. I wasn't able to join due to health issues and I guess my deck of cards. Um, but I've I've really been through a lot of crap. You know, I've been through battles after battles um, with all my health issues and uh, doctors or providers or whatever or their staff in general or tons of other things. I've, I've lost 13 years of my life. You know, so <clears throat> when I go to doctors and these mofos are saying that I'm just a hypochondriac, that I'm making things up, that they've done all these tests and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and now I got all this shit. And not to mention, there's a lot of things if you get, you're building, you're building antibodies to. So even if you got rid of the, actual, the, the situation, if you introduce certain things into your environment, your your uh, antibodies going to pop off, and you're going to start having those issues again. But if it was taken care of, you wouldn't have that issue. I mean, I'd be terrified to have a kid. But you know, it's just like for the military, though. It's there's just things you don't say. You know, you don't treat somebody like a piece of shit. And I think that's what a lot of doctors do. Not every doctor that I've seen is a douchebag. There's a lot of, you know, good doctors out there that I would definitely uh, respect. Um, but overall, there's hundreds of doctors that I've seen that, you know, I wouldn't come to the funeral. I'd piss on their graves, but uh, that's not even worth that. <clears throat> the thing is, is it, it's costing a lot. You know, it takes, for me, it takes 13 years of my life, but 13 years is, it's not 13 years, like, yeah, it's 13 years, but 13 years is so many different things. So many things happened in 13 years. So many things. Um, I mean, look at my, you know, look at me. Seven years ago, I don't look like this. I mean, I had all the health issues. I probably had more hair on my head. Um, I'm starting to get hair on my back. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Where did that come from? We <laughs> no. Not, no, no, I'm fat. I look like a metal-aged man. I literally have all the uh, the symptoms, uh, all the uh, the criteria for uh, metabolic syndrome. Not that I've actually been diagnosed with it, but I do fall under. I just haven't been diagnosed. Um, 
all kinds of stuff. And it really pisses me off. And these doctors, I mean, kind of come into a conclusion to a breakdown is um, these doctors don't do shit. Um, the management, they don't do shit. You know, you report this to the medical boards or whatever. They probably don't do shit, to be honest, because of lobbying. Yeah, and then this being Texas, one of the uh, the toughest states in the, the country, um, nothing happens. And then you have people like myself, or you have everybody else, many people that still watching me, I, I doubt it, but if they are, cool. Um, they're sick, you know, with whatever. I mean, I, I'm not dismissing pain. I mean, pain can be a real bitch. For chronic health issues and most people are diagnosed for chronic health issues under pain but there's people that's been through some shit that I feel is a lot worse but at the same time I mean I've, I've had some some pretty uh, extreme symptoms like purgatory symptoms but at the same time I mean there's people that could be healthier than me, but some of their stuff could be, I, I, I you know, <laughs> I was going to hats off to you, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, the, the health community, it's, um, I just wish there was more legislation, I wish there was more accountability, I wish that these doctors or providers in general, if they didn't um, go by the standards set by um, the establishment, the states, which also sucks because the states, they're all regulated, regulated differently. So the minimum standard in Texas is gonna be a lot different than New York. New York, I believe, probably has better healthcare, but you know, I'm not in New York. And even if I did find out I had something serious which could have been prevented if doctors weren't douchebags, um, I can't sue because you have, in Texas, a statute of limitation of two years. And even if I did have something and I wasn't um, at that two-year thing, you have to have a hundred thousand dollars just to put on the table and it's usually a million dollars and it can ride out for years and the, the cap is two hundred fifty thousand um, in the state of Texas but at the same time you know you get into a vehicle accident or whatever and shit you can get hundreds of thousands some people get millions of dollars but you have people such as myself and others, we get treated like shit and have all these issues and whatever, but nothing's ever done. You know, we just have to ride through the, uh, you know, the storms. Um, but I do believe that there should be more initiative um, for um, finding ways of having these so-called professional uh, health professionals uh, there should be more accountability if they're not doing what they're doing they should go they should uh, get huge fines and I don't mean just like little fines I'm not talking about a few hundred bucks or a couple thousand dollars I mean huge fines where just one fine I mean I, I guess it would be kind of on a contentious basis, a contingency basis, but, I mean, it hurts. Like, it doesn't, like, kill them, but it's, um, it makes a, hey, look, if you screw up, you're going to be accountable. Seriously. You know, and, and you're going to feel it. You know, 25, you know, if you're making hundred thousand dollars a year and somebody takes twenty five thousand you get a twenty five thousand dollar fine 
you know, and that's that's a hundred thousand um, gross. That's not net. So if you take twenty five grand, that's gonna hurt. Think about it. That is going to hurt. Um, or if it's like some big company that's making a hundred million dollars a year, you know, charge them twenty five million dollars. I guarantee you. But then again, you know they're going to have these lobbyists and everybody like, oh my God, that is so blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, what about us? What about the people that's actually suffering? You know, because these idiots aren't doing their job professionally. They don't care. It's like they want your fucking money, man. You know, they, they see you for a couple minutes, they charge you hundreds of dollars, and what? You're still sick. Decades later, you know, I mean, yeah, I understand there's people out there that go to the cardiologist because I've seen it, you know, because they got heart issues. But right after they freaking leave, they're like, before they leave, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to, you know, some barbecue place or whatever. And I'm going to go get a big ass barbecue sandwich or they're going to go to a fast food place and get a big ass burger and, you know, a large fry and a big Diet Coke. I can't make this shit up. Like, seriously, like, that's actually what they've told me. They're usually older than me. But, um, I mean, that's what's going on. And me, I don't do that. The way my health is, I, I can't do that. I, I can't afford it. Um, I mean, I, I'm not saying that I, I'm a saint and just eat vegetables and I'm vegan. I mean... I, I once in a while go to uh, fast foods, but I try to stay away from them. Um, I try to cook home uh, meals. Not that they're always the best either. I mean, that's something that people don't really think about is home-cooked meals is a thousand times different than, say, a hundred years ago. You know? It's... Everything's different because everything, you know, the way that the, the animals are... Um, readied up to be slaughtered, you know, all the, the antibiotics and the hormones and, you know, toxins and everything else and um, everything. It's just, you know. <coughs> oh, my mouth is dry. <coughs> this coffee. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really know if there's really any, any, any inning to this, but I just think that there should be accountability, as I've said a few different times. I think that there should be something, you know? I don't really want to get on politics, but I do think that, you know, these little whiny, sissy, crybaby snowflakes, uh, these feminists that think uh, it's okay to kill unwanted uh, babies, you know, these cocksuckers that's rising up around the nation all but her. Yeah, by the way, a man has no rights to his sperm. You know, he can literally nut in the condom, throw the condom away. If she gets it, regardless if it's her home, his home, or wherever, knocks herself up, it's fair game, it's a gift. And he could have to pay child support. Yeah, he has no rights. A man has no rights. Actually, you go to the court, the court essentially says that. It, it's not, but they'll use the, it's not up to, you know, about the, the, the woman or the man. It's the best for the child. I mean, I've heard a lot of stories. I've, I've heard of, you know, older women um, having sex with, like 30-year-olds having sex with 13-year-olds and... When he turns 18, he has to pay child support, even though, you know, she raped him. And she didn't even go to prison. That is fucked up, isn't it, right? She didn't even go to prison? I'm just like, wow, that's... That's pretty crazy, man. That is crazy. But, um... I'm going to get off here. I don't know if anybody's even watching anymore. 
45 minutes plus later. <laughs> but uh, that's what's kind of on my mind today. Um, overall, my health issues, blood pressure's been crazy. Uh, I was eating some, uh, yo some yogurt, some good yogurt. I mean, I don't know how good the yogurt is compared to, you know, the regular store-bought yogurt, but um, I, I've been, um, <clears throat> here and there, once in a blue moon, I've been buying white yogurt. Uh, it's a Austin business, uh, based out of Austin, Texas. <clears throat> but yeah, it's some pretty good yogurt. I mean, the uh, the cons the consistency is a little. Uh, <laughs> it's not like regular yogurt, but um, it's pretty good. I mean, I hear you can actually take that and actually make more yogurt if you know how to do it. But it has like ninety billion FP. I, I don't know something in cultures. But yeah, I, I took it yesterday and I was like, wow. So I was like, you know, I was trying to do my, um, this on here and I, I think I only had like one blackout. It's like, uh, what? You know, and I couldn't remember the, um, that one word of hand <laughs> once again. Uh, it, it's on the tip of my 